Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today in gaming, EA is having legal troubles in Canada. 2K Games kicked the hornet's nest with in-game ads, Twitch deleted thousands of videos, and more. EA's loot box troubles may have seemed like a thing of the past, but they're still very much a problem. On top of currently being sued in California over gambling concerns with FIFA Ultimate Team Mode, EA are now being sued in Canada. In this case, the plaintiffs argue that EA is profiting from an illegal gambling business by selling randomized loot boxes for real money. While the lawsuit specifically cites loot boxes in the Madden and NHL games, it's being raised on behalf of all EA customers as far back as 2008 who purchased loot boxes. If the plaintiffs win the case, that could mean a massive payout. EA's hyper-aggressive monetization of Star Wars Battlefront 2 and the FIFA franchise, as well as the implosion of CSGO's skin gambling scene, has led to a wave of loot box regulations in multiple countries. Canada currently has no loot box regulations. While this case's outcome doesn't have a direct legal bearing on Canada law, it could influence further legislation. 2K Games found themselves at the center of a controversy yesterday when an update for NBA 2K21 added unskippable ads to the game's pre-game load screen. The ads are for the Oculus Quest 2 and are part of the 2K TV segments. Fans were notably outraged at ads being placed in a paid game like this. Last year's NBA 2K20 was criticized for its heavy monetization and in-game advertising. 2K's response to the current outrage is a promise that they'll fix the ads. Apparently, they weren't intended to run during the pre-game loading screens, so it's unlikely they'll be removed entirely, just placed wherever they were initially meant to go. In accordance with DMCA law, Twitch have automatically purged thousands of videos from streamers' profiles. Twitch recently warned creators that they would be taking a more proactive response to copyright claims. They've come under fire from the music, movie, and TV industries for widespread use of copyrighted materials in live streams. While there's a ton of nuance to this issue involving fair use, licensing, and other legal factors, the big problem is Twitch didn't tell anyone what clips were specifically deleted or why. Typically, if a creator's content receives a DMCA claim, the platform tells them exactly what was claimed and why. This is how YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and many other platforms handle these things. So for a platform as large as Twitch to wipe content off their platform without any indication of what is being removed is very unexpected. On top of not telling creators what was being removed, the email notifications about the removal also warns creators to take down anything that might violate copyright laws. There's speculation that this mass removal is Twitch taking a shortcut to deal with a massive backlog of thousands of DMCA notices. Again, most other platforms offer an appeals process to fight DMCA claims. Twitch skipped that process entirely. Their explanation is basically, well, we just deleted everything and didn't tell you why. Consider this a warning. Devolver Digital, the indie mega publisher behind dozens of hit games, has acquired Crow Team. Crow Team is known for the Serious Sam franchise, but recently found massive success with their puzzle game, the Talos Principle. Devolver and Crow Team's relationship stretches back well before Devolver was even a real publisher. Crow Team was looking for a partner to help release Serious Sam 3, and from there, both companies went on to work on multiple titles together. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 just got a big multiplayer up update that adds private skate sessions, party migration, leader promotion, and the ability to host private matches on every map and free skate with friends. And while the game has been received with overwhelmingly positive reviews, players are still hungry for more content. DLC maps don't seem all that likely, but given how well 1 and 2 is doing right now, it wouldn't shock anyone if a 3 and 4 remake was also in the works. Testing just kicked off for Halo 4 on the Master Chief Collection PC port, and it's showcasing just how incredible Halo 4 looks. While 343's original stab at a proper Halo title was met with mixed reactions at launch and has maintained a somewhat sour reputation over the years, it was still a very forward-looking game that was clearly built with some ambitious goals in mind. Its PC release is pretty stunning and makes yet another strong case for the release of Halo 5 on PC. Rainbow Six Siege is getting a Halloween themed event and map. The event will feature a kill confirmed mode on a map called Sugar Fight. It looks pretty reminiscent of the game's April Fool's event and is due to launch tomorrow. 
Fortnite's Halloween event shrank the game's install size by 60 gigabytes. Since the game's original launch in 2018, it's gone from a meager 20 gigabytes to a pretty massive 90 gigabytes. The reduction is the result of optimizations made to the game's PC version. While the update itself is pretty massive at 27 gigabytes, future updates and additions to the game will be much smaller. PvP fighting game Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is getting a 1 vs 100 mode later this year as DLC. The game is notable for its accurate representation of the iconic show's visual style and earned a reputation as a pretty solid fighting game in general. The new mode is called Mob Battle and will pit you against waves of AI enemies. Based on the promotional images, it looks like Mob Battle will live up to its name. World War 1 FPS Beyond the Wire has launched on Steam. Its early access launch trailer recently blew my socks off and so far, the user reviews have been pretty positive. Unlike other historical shooters currently kicking around, Beyond the Wire throws you right into the action. There's a lot less running around or waiting for stuff to happen. Many are comparing it favorably to Battlefield 1. Ubisoft are merging their Uplay and Ubisoft Club platforms into a new service called Ubisoft Connect. The new service launches on the 29th alongside Watch Dogs Legion and essentially replaces Uplay on PC. It'll offer cross-platform progression on supported games, a new UI, a new in-game overlay on both consoles and PC, as well as continuing to support club rewards. Ubisoft follows EA, who recently unveiled their updated PC app called EA Desktop, which is set to replace Origin when it leaves beta. In our final story today, new gameplay footage of the upcoming horror puzzle FPS game called Scorn was released. The footage was captured on an Xbox Series X and is our first look at new gameplay in a couple of years. Scorn was successfully funded on Kickstarter back in 2017. At the time, the funds were being used to finish part one of a two-part game. Eventually, a demo of part one was released that was pretty bare bones, but it did live up to the Kickstarter's gruesome presentation of the game. Earlier this year, the dev announced that the game would be exclusively a next-gen title debuting on the Xbox Series X and PC sometime in 2021. The new gameplay shows a much more fleshed out game with enhanced visuals, level design, more enemy variety, puzzles, and more. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this down the road. And let me know what story you thought was the most interesting in the comments down below. I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.